time. We're from Climate Kick, yeah, and welcome. we would like to ask you about your contribution to this Our Common Future conference in Paris. Well, I was asked to uh, chair uh, one of the large parallel sessions that was about transition in cities. It was very interesting yesterday afternoon. We had uh, five very excellent speakers from academics and uh, academia, but also from the uh, Department of City Management of the uh, and Sustainable Development of the City of Rio de Janeiro. So it was very interesting. Then I was also in uh, another parallel session uh, about uh, co the cooperation in, in research in Europe and Kik was uh, actually represented there. Uh, I was on the panel uh, over there as well. Uh, I insisted on the importance of uh, continuing to fund fundamental research on climate science and not only climate services and the research leading to climate services. And then after that I was in a, a dialogue session yesterday on education around climate change, which was also very interesting. So uh, those are some of the uh, contributions uh, I made to the conference. So uh, undoubtedly your contribution is, uh, was really important to this conference that is ending today. Uh, according to your opinion, uh, uh, which were the, the highlights uh, of the conference in terms of uh, speakers and subject? Uh, well, that's, a, that's a, a tough question. I'm not sure I'm the best person to answer that question because I only attended uh, half of the, of the conference because I was in uh, South America and uh, including Cuba, which was my last stop until Wednesday morning. So I only arrived uh, Wednesday evening uh, when the, the first two days of the conference uh, had been over. Uh, but certainly yesterday, the, the plenary session with uh, very high level uh, um, speakers and this morning with uh, Joe Stiglitz and Laurence Tubiana and uh, and um, the um, Sheila uh, from uh, the Kennedy School in, in the US uh, were very uh, powerful speakers for sure. Um, a lot has been said lately about the importance of implementing uh, policies on carbon tax and uh, carbon trade. What's your opinion on that? Well, as I'm the IPCC vice chair, uh, I, my opinions don't matter. I can only uh, relay the, the, uh, that one of the, con the key conclusions of the IPCC report that is that carbon pricing is an, impo an important uh, facilitator of climate policies because as long as we uh, can use the atmosphere as a free uh, dump site, uh, it's hard to, to have real uh, concern and effort by those who emit greenhouse gases in the atmosphere to reduce those emissions. So carbon price, pricing is very important. Now the way uh, to, to do that, uh, either by a carbon tax or cap and trade systems or other ways, uh, is a matter of choice in each uh, country or region of the world. Uh, but carbon pricing is certainly uh, potentially a very important element of climate policy. Uh, IPCC started uh, in the 80s. Uh, 88, 1988. 80, 1988 yes. yes, correctly. Uh, how, do you, uh, how much uh, do you are, think... are you sure it's okay with all that noise? Oh, you, the microphone yeah? is good. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sorry. How much do you think uh, the scientific community has changed since then? It's true that the IPCC, which was created in 1988, uh, has uh, gone through a long, a long uh, period, a uh, long process. Uh, on the other hand, uh, some of the conclusions that the IPCC report, uh, the latest IPCC report contain, are not so different uh, from the conclusions of the first report. So, of course, we know uh, much more details and we have uh, much more detailed regional information, for example, on, on uh, climate change. But the key uh, conclusion, the key knowledge about the effect of greenhouse gases, the uh, observed warming, the expected warming, uh, according to different uh, scenarios for the uh, coming decades, etc., was very much known already 25 years ago. So it's, it's a matter of uh, surprise, actually, to, to see how long it took to, to get all of that in, in, in the mainstream uh, knowledge, almost in the culture, uh, and, and in a sense, it's sad uh, to see uh, how much time has been lost uh, to, uh, to, 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 to really deal with the problem itself. So, uh, time was lost, that's true. And uh, what do you think about the targets that we set it? Are we in a good track? Do we need to try more 
do we even need to change our mindset over uh, the policies that are followed uh, according to the latest discoveries of scientific community? Well, you know, the IPCC has to be careful not to be prescriptive. So we, we cannot recommend things uh, without, a, without a, a framework that has been decided by policymakers. So we, we can say things uh, on... We, we can say... Uh, for example, that to achieve the two degree target, which has been decided by policymakers uh, in 2009 and 2010, uh, that emissions uh, of greenhouse gases really need to, to be reduced to zero uh, well before the end of this century, uh, if that objective uh, really uh, must be met. That we can say. Uh, but we cannot say. Uh, without a reference, uh, one needs to do, to, to do this or one needs to do that. Now, the IPCC has assessed uh, the, um, the, the pledges made in Cancun uh, based on the scientific literature, which had the time to uh, integrate those pledges and see how much uh, emissions, uh, emission reductions they represented. And the IPCC has, in its latest report, assessed that at least what was of this was before the INDC, which are coming in now, uh, was not enough uh, to uh, to stay uh, to be on a track uh, that would be compatible with the two degree target, and that's of course even more so if the target became uh, 1.5 degrees C. Uh, the target you think uh, is going to be resetted? or it's going to remain to the 2.2 degrees um, before the... Well, that's a political choice that will be made, uh, that should be made in theory at the end of this year in Paris as well. Uh, there's, uh, there's been a long uh, preparation uh, which included a lot of uh, scientific input from IPCC, by the way, uh, because the impacts are different uh, for 1.5 or 2 degrees. And for some countries, for example, small island states or, or countries in Africa relying uh, very much uh, to, uh, to, to, um, on, on agriculture uh, for their um, economy, uh, and and the uh, the well-being of their people, uh, for those countries, uh, it it makes a difference, a uh, significant difference, whether the warming is limited to to two or to 1.5 degrees. Now, whether it's possible uh, or not, um, the IPCC said in its last report it is possible uh, to to stay below two degrees uh, if. Um, emission reductions are decided quickly and no more time is lost to implement uh, almost all of the options that are known and that are available and that it is also possible at least in theory uh, to do the same for 1.5 if the, uh, the, uh, the will to implement all those measures is even stronger so that the measures are implemented even faster. So. It's possible. Uh, we'll see at the end of the year what is decided, but that's for governments to decide. As a final comment, would you like to say something for uh, the Climate Kick students, who are the future of the scientific community uh, and the climate, I guess? Uh, do you have a small comment for them? Sure. I mean, it's very encouraging to see that uh, there's a new generation of uh, climate scientists and scientists working on the different aspects of climate change, from uh, the, the, the science itself to adapt the science of impacts adaptation, the science of mitigation, uh, because, of course, uh, the future is in our hands, but it's uh, very much in, in your hands, actually, more than in uh, uh, our old hands anymore. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Zambascal. It was You're a most welcome. to you. Likewise. Thank you. Merci Jean Pascal. Merci à toi, merci à vous. Vous nous gagnez moins